when you're facing a stressful situation, would you rather text somebody or email them or call them on the phone? Interesting question these days. I know that people from the millennials all the way up to my friends who are even in their 70s and 80s, they communicate by texting much more often than they do by talking on the phone. Now, for some of my friends, they have a little bit of a challenge with hearing, but those who recognize it have telephones that have volume boosters on them. So I get to talk with my friends. And then there are always people of any age who don't want to acknowledge that they have a hearing problem and just maybe complain to you that you don't talk loud enough. Except you know that's got to be happening for everybody. Well, here's the thing about talking with somebody as opposed to reading messages that people are texting or typing in the email. When you hear someone's voice, you're actually being influenced by the soothing quality of the voice. And in fact, it boosts your oxytocin level. That's the hormone, sometimes called the love hormone, the connection hormone. It's the feel-good hormone that connects you with people. And at the same time, your stress hormones are lowered, but only when you hear the voice. People who are texting, no matter how much love is in that typed message, their bodies don't have any kind of reduction of the stress hormone, nor do they have a boosting of the oxytocin hormone. The average person today is spending 26 minutes texting every day. 26 minutes. That's a lot. The average person today spends six minutes talking on the phone. Now, I'm somebody who prefers talking on the phone, and of course, the soothing quality of a voice, the connecting, the heart to heart, it just doesn't happen when you're reading the words. So I recommend that you listen to this very short podcast. It's about voicemails. It's about the value of talking to someone. And it has the details of the studies because this is something scientists have been studying for a long time. The benefits of talking. As a matter of fact, the studies show that talking to somebody on the phone does the same thing in your brain, chemical-wise, activity-wise, as getting an actual hug. It's that oxytocin again. I'm Ellie Bierman. You can find me at your relationshipintelligence.com. Go on over and pick up my gift for you because until you understand what relationship intelligence is, until you know how to build your relationship intelligence, your relationships are going to remain stagnant, ho-hum, or even deteriorating. I will see you here next time.